I'm Cameron. I'm David. And I'm relieved that we're not watching on Her Majesty's Secret Service. You'll get there, Nathan. <laughs> You'll get there. But um, me and David kind of have colluded together. And that collusion has resulted in us watching the 90-minute um, pilot to David Lynch and Mark Frost's Twin Peaks. A uh, groundbreaking show um, from... It was um, late 80s and then technically early 90s because 89 to 90. And it was very influential. You can kind of see the influences, especially with the character of Dale Cooper and, you know, kind of a weird mysteries with shows like, you know, X-Files and Fox Mulder and um, True Detective with um, Rust Cole. And, you know, um, obviously, you know, this has got Lynch written all over it. So, yeah, that's what we're going to be watching right now. And, uh, David, you've seen the entire show? Yes, I have. Nathan, have you? I have not. I have seen a little bit of the pilot, but I've read the script for it. Oh, yeah, had, I remember that. Yeah, in, um, in our advanced directing class at UNLV, we had to do scenes <laughs> from, Twin Peaks. from the pilot of Twin Peaks. And this is probably one of the more most one of the more iconic images from Twin Peaks, where it obviously says, Welcome to Twin Peaks. Yep. In fact, in the uh, movie, uh, Twin Peaks Fire Walk With Me... <laughs> that when they, sign looks like breasts. <laughs> <laughs> Boobs. But when yeah. they when they uh, switch the story to taking place in Twin Peaks in that movie, this is the first image they do, along with what we're listening to right now, the iconic Twin Peaks theme by Angelo Badalamente. Ba Badalamente. Who should have won an Emmy for this. I don't think he did, but... Of course, it's tough. So, um... And there's Jack Nance, who's, you know... Eraser, freq hey, yep, hey. frequent, frequent David Lynch player. And, um, he was also, um, if... Uh, this is just a random bit of trivia here. Yeah, he was also in the music video for Suicidal Tendencies, uh, Institutionalized. He was the father in that. You know, the one, the, the song where the guy's like, All I wanted was a Pepsi! Yeah. One single Pepsi! <laughs> that music video, uh, he plays the, um... The father. I've also heard like this score ripped off a bunch of other places too. I, in one place in particular was when I was watching Scream Two, and they're like, "Here comes Dewey," and then you hear, dow, 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 dow. <laughs> and I'm like, did, "Did they just rip off Twin Peaks for for David Arquette?" Okay. Well, if they're, well, they're going to rip off Twin Peaks for any Arquette, <laughs> why David? Why not David? Why not World Championship Wrestling Heavyweight Champion? David Arquette. Why not Alexis Arquette? <laughs> um, because, now, he, okay, the... because Alexis already had the pleasure of being killed by Chucky. Aww. Do they use these opening credits for the rest of the show too, or is it just like this for the pilot? Oh, uh, they do, but they're nowhere near as long. Okay. No I was going to say, long. like, people people don't want to sit around for uh, credits this long for a now, fucking TV show. When Twin Peaks <laughs> first debuted, um, from my well, I understand, because when it first debuted, I was a little kid and wouldn't have been interested. But because, you know, kids like uh, Ninja Turtles and yeah. popcorn and other oh, yeah. I, things. I don't even remember this being on TV. I, I remember this. I, the first ever reference to Twin Peaks I remember is on The Simpsons when Homer's watching oh, it. And it's, and it's, yeah. a, and, um, it's the giant um, dancing with a unicorn in the, in a, against a uh, wind-blowing tree in a traffic light. And Homer goes, this is brilliant. I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> I, I do remember actually seeing this when I was a kid. I think my, my parents actually watched it. And I think I walked by and I was like, what's going but, on? But uh, the thing is, when this premiered, it didn't premiere as a normal uh, TV show. This was uh, The pilot episode was actually a TV movie. Yeah, well, on the menu right before we started recording, it said international version and regular version. Yeah. And so... Now the international keep going because you started okay. to explain that I said no okay. stop well, save it for the see the international <laughs> version the main difference between the international version and what we see here is that the international version reveals who killed Laura Palmer and that's the central mystery and um, mm -hmm. Laura Palmer is about to make her um, entrance into the show because we all know the person who killed her was Keenan <laughs> yeah uh, he dressed up in a, he actually is the man from another place. <laughs> Now, oh, it's conveniently already wrapped up. This is a very tidy killer. I appreciate that. Now, when you watch um, Fire Walk with me, which is like, so it's just kind of like, a, you know, essentially it's the last week of Laura Palmer's life, and you see how she's murdered, holy shit. It's, it's, I mean, you've seen it, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's, it's hard to watch. 
And I don't think um, I don't think uh, Cheryl Lee or any, or anybody really got the credit they deserved for on what they did. Well, it, it definitely ranks up there with one of the scariest <laughs> scenes yeah. that David Lynch has ever directed. Oh, from the um, because um, since Fire Walk with Me deals a lot with Laura Palmer, you also get to see her family, you know, um, which is you know her father Leland played by Ray Wise and his. Oh, and, I know her. Yeah, Kimmy Robertson. Um, she was the voice of Alice on the Mad Hatter episode of Back Bound the Anime series. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, he's and, uh, not a rapist. He's not a rapist. He's a pedophile. Not that either. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think you know there's a lot of stuff about. Uh, I think some of the acting on this show is kind of underrated. I mean, it, as much as I you know I'm I love the character of Dale Cooper. I think everybody pretty much does a good job on the show. Mm-hmm. And I, I do remember when the show it hit and it hit hard. It was yeah. just a it was a cultural phenomenon. Mm-hmm. It got nominated for a slew of Emmys, didn't win anything. I bet you like. But then why didn't it last? Because in the second season, yep. due to pressure from executives, they revealed who Laura Pal- who killed Laura Palmer, and after that, they went into the uh, this really bad kind of sequence of horrible episodes. And David Lynch was not as directly involved in the second season until mm-hmm. about the last episode. And that's when things got. And that's when cooking. That's when things got to start cooking. It was his entire. I'm a, this entire really retarded storyline about one of the characters deciding he's a Civil War general. <laughs> Wait, you what? remember that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, that's everyone's reaction. It's like it was being weird for the sake of being weird, and then it gets into this really good storyline of somebody setting up the character of Dale Cooper as a um, dirty um, FBI agent, which is a good story. Well, and also, wasn't there something where at the time Kyle McLaughlin was dating Lara Flynn Boyle? Oh, um, and she didn't well, like the well, fact that they were well, going to start well, this thing with Heather Graham. No, no, no. But we'll, I'll, I'll get to that when yeah. we see um, when we see uh, what was so, what, what, what was no what was supposedly the uh, target of her anger. Sherilyn Finn. Yeah. And by the way, Sherilyn Finn's awesome. Yeah. Was she was she jealous because Sherilyn Finn was dating Johnny Depp around that time? No, I'll explain it when we get to her. But from. <laughs> You have um, to see it to understand it. But no, no I, but, I do like that though, like the whole that. Yeah. They kind of, and they even turn that into a running joke when David Lynch is less involved in season two. Andy crying every time. Mm-hmm. This is already kind of reminding me of. Uh, have you seen the the BBC show uh, Broadchurch? Yeah, Broadchurch is another thing that, that Broadchurch, this has been a, yeah, that, um, this amazing. Season. But this is already kind of. Rem- I can see the influences already because Broadchurch is about a very True small town, small community, and there's a murder and what happens. Have you ever seen um, True Detective? I haven't. I've, I've heard nothing but oh. good things. I've, I keep meaning to watch it, and I haven't gotten around to it yet. But that's one of those shows for the kind of serialized seasons and shows like that. I always prefer to wait till you know, the season is done, then I can binge watch the whole mm-hmm. thing. But it's been done for a while, and I just keep, well, oh. I keep forgetting to watch it. Oh, Laura Palmer. And then uh, the trailers for the second season are starting to come out. The second season looks good too, especially um, it's got Vince Vaughn and Colin Farrell and, and correct me if I'm wrong, and John it, Carter. When it <laughs> when it comes to this as a television show, was there also the influence with the fact that it has a very cinematic look to it? Did that oh, yeah. also help too? I think yeah. The, the, from what I understand, this is not a cheap. Sh- this has never been a cheap show to make. Oh, and we are recording this on the day where after you know weeks and weeks of you know people wondering if it was going to happen. Indeed, David Lynch is returning to Twin Peaks for not just the original nine episodes he and Mark Frost have written for the new series. Mm-hmm. There's going to be more. Wow. So whatever they did, they must have made um, they must have made David Lynch very happy. Yep. I got my dick sucked major <laughs> big time. Are they are they planning on rebooting it as a full no, show or continue, or is it no. going to be like a limited, they, 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 like they're when, doing with the X-Files when they, when they released, When they released the first trailer for um, the new show, back before all this you know contract drama bullshit mm-hmm. started, um, there's a line in the show oh, yeah. where um, Laura Palmer, who, no surprise, she's dead, yeah. but, <laughs> in one of, but in one of Cooper's dreams... Um, she says to him, "You'll see me again in 25 years." Yeah. And then, wouldn't you know it? It's 25 years since Twin Peaks went off the air. Yeah, but um, the thing is, it's not. But it's going to be a limited run kind of thing. Like yeah, that. but it's going to be more than I think the initial nine episodes. More like if a mini series rather than a. Well, the first season of Twin Peaks oh. is only nine episodes long. 
Okay. Hey, Cameron, did you recognize who that guy is? I've, I, he's one of those actors where I see him so often, but I... He's you know. great. Yeah. Isn't it, isn't it, I thought for a second, isn't it like uh, Mahoney, is that his name, from The Thing? That's not him, is it? Or am I thinking I, of another similar bald You're thinking of another guy. You're thinking of another guy. A bunch of bald redheads. Not all bald guys, men right? look alike, David. Bald redheads look alike. Yeah, David. <laughs> And uh, here is um, Grace Zabarski. Zab 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 she's Smith. Good. Grace Smith. Yes, she's good. <laughs> but um, and if I remember correctly, this was like when you did this. This was before he did uh, Wild at Heart, or at the same time. I think it was. It was around this time because this is um, this is where he just got you know. Um, you know, uh, Cheryl Lee to be in it, and um, Sherilyn Finn's also in it, and I think this is where he first worked with both of them. Yeah, because, I mean, the other thing was when, like, because, I, like, uh, the use of color and such, mm -hmm. it does remind me very much of, of uh, Wild at Heart. Like, you know how Wild at Heart kind of had, like, a warmer look yeah. to it? Well, but, I'm, um, I'm just talking about Wild at Heart, which I think it's a very, very underrated David Lynch movie. Oh, yeah, it is. And that would be a fun one to... And actually, this is... Correct me if I'm wrong, but is this not the second, um, you know, film? I'm doing like the bunny ears here or what have you, by a director, right? David Lynch is in this the second time, second go around. With just us commentating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's also the second time with Kyle McLaughlin. Yeah, yes. Oh, and here's yet. Sherilyn Finn. It's the first time we're doing a TV show, though. Yeah. But it's also technically a TV movie. And I, the, the reason we didn't want to do this was to set a precedent because there's, there's this great TV horror movie I want to I want to do if I can ever find it on DVD called Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. Which oh is yeah, awesome. I think I've seen that. Is that from the eighties? Yeah, it's, it's, kind of it's older. A, like, have you, um, have you you've seen Dark Man, right? Yeah, yeah. The guy who plays Durant is the um, is stars in Dark Knight. Yes, of the I have seen that. Oh my god, I saw. I think I saw that when I was a kid. Yeah. Wait, which one was Durant? Um, the, the boss, bad guy. the bad guy, the guy that. Uh, oh, I was gonna say I thought it was Doctor Giggles for. No, Doctor Giggles. Yeah, Doctor yeah. Giggles. Oh, yeah. that's the boss. That's the actor, yeah. Uh huh. Oh, and and Darkman, yeah, the guy that. Um, gives I thought he was the co-boss. No, he's the guy who gives the order. To okay, okay, okay. So it is Doctor Giggles. Fun note: My best friend growing up in Arizona, his brother Darren Heems, professional working actor, his first role was on Doctor Giggles. Oh really? He's the guy who gets um, killed in the bed sheets right oh. after he gets right after he have sex with his girlfriend. <laughs> Darren Heems, looking up. Great, great character actor. And one of the great things about Twin Peaks is, um, even though it went on for essentially two years, the entire show does not take place in two years. Like, the first season only takes place over the course of, like, a, what, a week? Yeah, pretty mm -hmm. much. They're kind of doing a Lost thing where, mm -hmm. even though, you know, the first, what, three or four seasons of Lost, that's three or four years, but in the show, it's, like, a matter of months. Yeah. Kind of thing, so, that's good. That's interesting. Yeah, okay. And of course, you're beginning to wonder why his characters are getting fatter. Look at all that wood. Good lord. Oh, this guy. What's Ray, his name? Ray, Ray Wise. Wise. Yes, oh, he's, he's a Robo. He was. He's he's in RoboCop. But what else has he been in? One of my favorite it's roles he was in is is a very small role, but in Good Night and Good Luck, mm -hmm. he's really good in that. Where he plays this. Uh, I forgot the character's name, but he ends up committing suicide because of the whole. You know, he's in a great era. episode of Next Generation. The uh, Who Watches the Watchers. Mm -hmm. And he plays the devil in what was that Kevin Smith show on the CW? Oh, that that was um, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, what's it called? I can't remember. It was a cool show. Yeah, and he, and he plays the devil in it. He's really good. Wasn't he also in Jeepers Creepers too? <laughs> oh, this is a really good like a uh, really good moment. I like that. Oh, the, the car in the background. The yeah, that's great. Of course, before the time of cell phones and texting yeah. and Facebook, and, and so you, you well, learn about it very slowly. Uh oh, jeez, Leland, your daughter wants you to come to a surprise party. Oh, Shit. God. <laughs> what? I think that's the one mis misconception that people. I mean, we touched upon this in the blue on the blue velvet commentary, and that is David Lynch really does have like a heart for for mm -hmm. other people and such. That and he is Jimmy I, Stewart from Mars, as Mel Brooks, you know, would properly described him. I, I just like the way this is shot because it, there's there's no thing of your daughter, your daughter's da like there's no like throwing in your face. But it's also it feels like a, a, a community that they mm -hmm. know each other. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> now, um, uh, Grace Smith tells a great story that when, um, <laughs> when, uh, the, uh, this actually premiered in a theater, and when this was shown, there, um, this moment where she actually kind of breaks down kind of got some laughs from the audience. Really? And um, Uh-oh. no, but not like, but but the way she said it was like, it's beca- and she goes, well, it's the same time when you uh, go see like a any kind of horror movie or something, and they re- and you kind of laugh after being scared. Yeah, it's like that's the good o- point. It's sometimes it's the only way you can actually react without kind of you know exposing yourself. I, I, did, like, I did like at the moment she breaks down and realizes what's happened is by the sound of the phone yeah, falling yeah, on the ground. That's a nice touch. You can never accuse David Lynch of him not knowing what he's doing. God, he should have won the Emmy for this for best director. He probably went to an LA Law episode. <laughs> or, or thirty or thirty something. It, it was the It was the LA Law episode where um they, you know, find out something important about themselves and morality. <laughs> Maybe it was seen elsewhere. I don't know. Fine, you have a little bit of crust. Are you happy now, David? You got some of my pizza crust. <laughs> oh, but here comes another important um, location for the show: the diner, where they serve cherry pie and black coffee. And apparently, they wear hats made of tin foil so that the aliens don't read their thoughts. You don't? <laughs> oh, Jennifer Goodwin. Too busy jet starting on that. Her, 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 her. No, that was the Italians. <laughs> Mamma mia, Papa Pete. Burn! I have never seen a diner in America with this many hot waitresses. This is well, that's why completely you know, taking me out of the show. <laughs> is it taking you out of your show and back into a fantasy where you're the bus boy at a place with the waitresses? <laughs> Look at that, look at that helmet, good lord. That is a shiny fucking helmet. Okay, I'm gonna figure this out. Who, what are you looking for? I'm gonna look up who beat David Lynch. Oh, for the Emmy? Yeah, I'm gonna find out. Yeah. He's part of the T gang. It's the He's one of the T birds. Okay. When you're a T, you're a T all the way. Oh, God. Well, according nice to. Nice car. Ah, oh, I forgot that. Isn't that one of those, like, that, that, that looks like, you know, um, one of like those... Four. Yeah, you, you've seen Fa- Phantasm, right? Yes. That, that kind of looks like, oh, the, ba- yeah. that kinda looks like the Batacuda, except, you know, I obviously... Love, I love how they have to sit so close because of the aspect ratio. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, oh, well, you can't do widescreen, so make sure they sit really close. That's going to be another great thing about when it comes out back. It's obviously going to be in widescreen. <laughs> and shot on film. Oh, really? That's yeah. interesting. Yes. Anyway, what were you saying, David? Did you find out? Oh, that uh, turned out that Columbo beat Kyle McLaughlin for Best Actor this. I can't be best angry. Actor. I can't be angry yeah, about that. Columbo. I can't, because Columbo's fucking badass. Yeah. Do you know who directed the pilot episode of Columbo? Who? Steven Spielberg. Really? Yeah. The pilot? When he started, wow. when he started that was when he was doing, like, uh, episodes of Night Gallery and... And, uh, like that. I and TV, uh, he did the pilot and, for Columbo. And let known fact, in about two years, Nathan will travel back in time to become Steven Spielberg. <laughs> yeah, I will. If that happens, can you please cast us in Jaws? <laughs> we won't have been born. No, but he can take us with them. No, he's. It's a one-way trip for one. Son Haven't of you man. seen Terminator? God damn it, Son David! Of a bitch. It's yeah. all to get in um, young Kate Capshaw's pants. <laughs> sure. Can you blame me? No. <laughs> But just remember, two weeks from now, Steven, you need to contact me and David <laughs> and give us five oh, million bucks apiece. Oh, for Pete's sake. It was a tie. Between who? 30, 30-something oh. and a show called Equal Justice. For Best Director? Yeah. What's he, what the, what the fuck's weird. Equal Justice? I don't know. Oh, and uh, right now we're... And that's what I like about this opening opening thing. Like, so far we have... That's only two seasons. This, this, um, this pile is at... Dave, would you agree that, you know, Comic Lachlan's Dale Cooper is the main character of Twin Peaks? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you, yeah at least, like, the central at least figure. That, at least that's yeah. what I heard, because, like I said, yeah. I've never well, really watched well, the show. But. For the fir- well, you know, when they announced it was coming back, the big thing, question was, are they going to get Kyle McLaughlin? Are they going to get Kyle McLaughlin? So, and I would say, since a lot of the show does kind of focus on him trying to find out what happened to Laura. Yeah, that's crazy. He it has been doing a lot of TV lately. I've yeah. seen him in a bunch of stuff. But, um... For the first thirty minutes of this pilot, it might, it might just be twenty, but I think for the f- literally the first third of this uh, 
movie, you don't see him. Mm. He doesn't show up. They're, and if they're instead setting up what the town is on the on a very surface level to make you think it's all cute and cuddly and leave it to beaver shocks. <laughs> but it's also just, just like Blue Velvet. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. But also, yeah. but also just goes to show you just how smart Lynch is as yeah. a storyteller, and as you know, let it happen instead of just like okay, get get the, I, get I the hot that, guy. And, I, I I loved how that was lit. And how it's lit right now. Glad they turned that light on. I was going to say, like, how can he even see her? <laughs> and, um, and then another thing about the show was, um, you know, a, a part of the big thing that made this a phenomenon was everyone was going, who killed Laura Palmer? Who killed Laura Palmer? That was a, the huge, like, you know, thrust of the show. Mm-hmm. I mean, think I like who, think who shot Mr. Burns times a thousand. Times a thousand. Yeah. I mean, I know. Uh, okay, here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no! Just a quickly point. I just I like the shot of like the, the violent winds hitting the tree. It's sort yeah. of like the peaceful town is now being okay. disrupted by this evil force. Now, since Laura Flynn Boyle and um, Sherilyn Finn are on screen together, she's at the same the, time. she's the skinniest. So apparently, thing the school's ever. colors are lipstick red and vomit yellow. Um, vomit orange. <laughs> yeah. But um, one of the things with Laura Flynn Boyle was she did not like the fact that within Twin Peaks, um, they were building t- they were building towards a kind of flirtation, romantic tension between um, Audrey Horn, who's played by Sherilyn Finn, mm-hmm. and Agent Cooper, who's played by Colin. Oh, Hawkins. this guy! <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Totally sold that from Spielberg. You gotta tell him not to do that when you go back. But um, when that happened, when they decided to kind of try to do a romantic relationship. Laura Flynn Boyle didn't like it because A, she was dating McLaughlin at the time, and B, she was really jealous of Sherilyn Finn because Sherilyn Finn's character was not originally in the show. Mm-hmm. Sherilyn Finn read for um, Donna Hayward, which is yeah. um, Laura Flynn Boyle's part, but she... Uh, they liked we, her so much that they were... Yeah, they, Lynch, Lynch liked her so much. It was like, I want to make a part just for you. Kind of like, uh, what's his face in Walking Dead? Um, yeah, Daryl Dixon. They, they liked him so much, they're like, let's create a character for this guy because he's... You're, so you're talking cool. about Daryl, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so was Merle then created, or because they had to get? No, I think to, I can't. Mike, I was this Merle around? Because Michael Rooker was awesome. Or no, like, Michael Rooker's awesome. Yeah, that's it. But, just in general, but yeah, just, just uh, not on Walking Dead. And just then when um, everyone really liked Sherilyn Finn as Audrey Horn, because let's face it, Audrey Horn's a fun character. She's really fun to watch, and you know. <laughs> <laughs> and you know Sherilyn Finn is far from being hard on the eyes. I mean, it also helped. Yeah, I was gonna say that the camera, you know, the loves ca- her. And, like, she's, uh, and I never understood why she never really got it big when it came to like movie roles and such. Was it? I think it was just her selection of roles. Like she didn't want to take the bigger. Was it she? Who, Laura Flynn Boyle? No, 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 no Sherilyn Finn. Was I it, understand why Laura Flynn Boyle boxing was, was boxing Helena. That was yeah, she was that in was, that. Mm-hmm. That kind of killed it, huh? I like how I've seen more of the excellent acting range in Men in Black 2. I like this. I like the visual thing that's about to go on. It's a. I like. I love this. I'm always a sucker for like the empty chair motif. They don't have to like know what we're just saying. But and here here's the other other thing that I kind of get from watching the show and having watched Fire Walk with me. I think Moira Kelly does would would have been better as. Donna Hayward throughout because she's just more believable as being an, a nice person. I'm trying to remember the the, the crime deputy. What was he in? I've seen I can't him remember. Before. I genuinely can't. To the internet. <laughs> to the Google. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. What was the character's name? Uh, deputy. I can't remember it. You're a teenager. You don't get up early. <laughs> you did it, didn't you? you stay Your home. story doesn't hold up. <laughs> you stay home and play Nintendo. <laughs> oh, it's Deputy Andy. Deputy Andy. Deputy Andy. Is that a Texas flag in the background? Uh, I don't think so. I think it's this takes place in Oregon. No, I, take, I think it takes place in Washington, actually. Washington State. Oh yeah, that guy. The guy who was sitting down. Mm-hmm. This movie's full of great character actors. Deputy Andy. Awesome. Oh, that's where I've seen him from. Erie, Indiana. That's where he looks familiar. She was found just after dawn. 
this really is a, as a you know as a movie and as a pilot, it really is a good who done it. But you don't find out <laughs> unless you're watching the international version, which we are not. <laughs> now, when we get to the end, I'll ask how they reveal. Do you really want to know? Because I mean, I would at think the, at the end you want to know who but killed Laura Palmer. Sh- but didn't they show that in the pilot though? Because it was the goof that you're telling me about. <laughs> but you know, there's more to it than that. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. I we mean, at, in okay. the international version, at the end, does someone just pop up and be like, "Oh, so so and so did it," or is it like kind of like kind of? Like, oh, that's bullshit. <laughs> Come here, sexy. What I also like about the show, you know, in addition to being everything else, it's also at times a really good satire of soap operas. Oh yeah, like a brilliant satire of it. It's one of those things. It's one of those shows where it confuses the shit out of people because they don't know what to feel, whether or not they're supposed to laugh at it or feel sad. Or if you're like certain stuttering fools we know, be like, uh, uh, duh, this is stupid. Are you wait? Are you serious? Huh? He. he I'm just assuming he doesn't okay. like it. <laughs> I'm, I'm just under that assumption. If it's good, he's not going to like it. Or if he's told people. <laughs> if people have told him, like, you should watch this. I will not. I am an expert. Let me tell you about film chemistry. I wonder if that's supposed to be gold. That's the color they're yeah. supposed to have. Because it really does look like a 70s high school. Yeah. It does. <laughs> It, it, it does create that mood of it, of just like this, yeah. this entire place. It's like no, I think it's timeless. It, exactly. That's what it's like um, you know Burton's Gotham. It's yeah. timeless, or even better, the animated Gotham, yeah. or Edward Scissorhands. Right? Yeah. How that was done. Mm-hmm. Or yesterday evening. You do actually see that 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 connection with like filmmakers like Tim Burton, Terry Gilliam, and David Lynch that they were all you know start up as artists, as painters, and such. And then when they go and they make their movies, you do see this recurring element of like of referencing the past but creating these worlds where you're not certain if, if it's set contemporary <laughs> or if it's set in the past. So it's the fifties, the sixties or seventies. So um this is another famous piece of music from uh Twin Peaks oddly enough called um Laura Palmer's theme or the love theme from Twin Peaks. Which is weird that we call the love theme because it's a song that's just kind of dripping with tragedy. <laughs> No one's going over to hug Butch over there. Come on. <laughs> and um, dude, did you see this uh, recently where um, David Lynch was actually given an award and a Barbie doll voiced by Lynch accepted it? No. <laughs> what? <laughs> so David Lynch, I don't know. I don't know what the award was for, but the acceptance speech was on video, and it's a close up on a Barbie head, and it's Lynch going, "Hi, well, David wanted me to tell you he really." <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> and the thing is, it's one of those things where I can't tell if it's something he wanted to do just for some kind of weird point, or if he's like, I want to fuck with people. <laughs> you probably made a bet. Someone was like, I bet if you win, you won't go up with a Barbie doll and make the Barbie doll to give you your acceptance or, or maybe, or maybe it, was a, it was a bet where it was like, I'll talk, I'll talk with a Barbie doll, but you talk with that G.I. Joe. And then at the end of it, he says, and for giving him the word, he wants to give you a present back. And then it's this short thing of um, this to- these two toy birds singing a song. <laughs> Maybe. It's just one of those things where I think because of his reputation, like if I had David Lynch, David Lynch's reputation, there's no way I wouldn't use that to fuck with people sometimes. <laughs> it reminds me like when, when Philip Seymour Hoffman was going to accept the, the Oscar, he had this bet with, I think it was Dan Futterman or Bennett Miller when they were mm-hmm. in college, and he said that if I ever win an Oscar, I'm going to go out and bark my acceptance speech. And he didn't. He backed out. You, you, you fat bastard. And then he did everyone. Because he was guilty, David. <laughs> I think the, that shot is also using an enormous amount of that throughout the entire show. It's a ghost of it. <laughs> Actually, you know, I, I was mentioning him. It's like, you know, if they're you know, bringing back Twin Peaks, Philip Seymour Hoffman would be the kind of guy who'd fit right in with this yeah. world. <laughs> They're gonna have to find somebody or to replace somebody who is important who died. Mm-hmm. You know who I'm talking about, right? Does he have a death bag? Is that what you're talking about? Um, 
Uh, he likes Garmonbosia a lot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> What's well, kind of hard because he died of. He, 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 we're talking about who we think you're talking about. He died of AIDS, right? Yeah, yeah, that's sad. Do you know what chemo is, sir? Wait, Philip Seymour Hoffman had AIDS? No, um, <laughs> there, I, no, no, no. Uh, a character, character on the show. He, oh, yeah, an actor. Yeah. So I wonder right. if he, I wonder if they're even gonna reference him, or if he's gonna have a different look. <laughs> Philip Seymour Hoffman had AIDS. Good look. Ah, pain. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just taking a piss over here. Yeah. Did she say anything? But I do like how it's like set up where it's like everybody knows everyone. Mm -hmm. It's like it's, it's like one of those themes of like you know how some people when they say we know when they're gonna kill themselves they say if, if I kill myself nobody will miss me I'll yeah. make no difference. In this case, it's one of those where in this community even like the most insignificant death seemingly it turns out to hit the entire community hard. That's what Ooh. that's what I really. <laughs> He just put his arm around me. Uh, that's what I really like about broad church is that it takes a little while for all those connections to get made and for you to realize, okay, this is how everyone kind of knows each other. But then once you got that in place, I'm not, it's I, I, so what I'm gonna say, I hope doesn't spoil much of True Detective, but True Detective kind of has that, except mm -hmm. it takes so it's not in that same way because it does, doesn't take place in a small town, but mm -hmm. the close connections are eerie when they do show up. Mm -hmm. I'm just I'm just remembering something. When it comes to Twin Peaks, there's a lot of um, visual motifs with the mirrors, correct? Yeah, and the hell, the mirror is the whole reason why somebody so, got yeah. cast in the show. Yeah. So, well, it's like oh, we look. It looks like we have a second victim. Dun dun dun. Two victims in one episode. Less value. <laughs> that log. That was the victim right there. We and got, it's really, it's really weird though, because I, I found the, I always find those shots fascinating because I'm like, oh man, that's how stuff works. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Nance is should really be, great. <laughs> that should be a symbol. Two four bites. <laughs> that's what my woman left me. You got the four by eight of my heart. Piper Laurie being an awesome uh, villainous shit again. And Joan Chen being Joan Chen. Joan Chen. Wasn't she in R Rambo? Was that her or was that I don't else? think that was her. Okay. I... Cause I'm trying to picture where we picture her with that long hair and it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't look yeah. like her at all on the face. I think the, the actress, uh, she has a different, the, it's the, the nose is kind of what gives it away. Mm -hmm. Aren't you supposed to pull a plug? <laughs> oh, I, Why don't you say push the plug? I wonder if Piper Lurie's going to come back when the show comes back. She's going to be quite old. So are, well, so, are, so are a lot of people. Because David Lynch talked to Ray Wise and like, hey Ray, you think about coming back? Yeah. Because <laughs> he said the town's still there. I could, we could probably figure something out for everyone. Yeah, you're not doing anything, are you, Ray? Last, uh, I, the last time I saw Ray Wise, he was doing some, uh, something with Tim and Eric. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> that, that, that was a little scene to show you how much of a stone cold bitch she is. So, fired him. Why? Because she looked at him. She looked at him. <laughs> hey, they're shiny okay, hat again. You know, it's, 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 the same, it's the same reason that you, fi that, uh, you fired Keenan off of Murder Cops. You look, what's your name? Keenan? You're, You're fired. fired. I Bad. thought I was like, what's your name? Drew, You're fired. <laughs> I fired a lot of people off that show. <laughs> I love that. Oh. She lived. That wonderful 80s hair. All poofy, yeah, I love the, all curly. That wonderful 80s hair that screamed, I've just been the victim of a violent sexual assault. She's, yeah. she has, she's not a victim, it's just the 80s. That's, yeah. that's yeah. how people were back then. That's, how, that's <laughs> why it was so confusing back then. You know, even in something where it's like, you know, it's not widescreen, because I... 
you know, it's, it's this, is su- this is Academy super- ratio, but he's still able to paint a this really is, wonderful was, picture. No, was it, I, this is one thing I don't know. Was this shot on 35 or do you think Super 16? Oh, that I don't know. That's a good question. I wouldn't put it past David Lynch when they do the new Twin Peaks if he keeps it in the <laughs> And we'll have the black bars oh, all left right. and right. It would have been so great. That, that would be amazing. It would be so great if you had done that with Fire Walk with me. Like, the credits, widescreen, and then... <laughs> and that was pissed off. The ent- Actually, the entire audience was pissed. Because when that movie came out, oh my god. It was they were expecting ravaged. something ravaged. They were expecting something a lot yeah. more lighthearted. And you know what? I've seen the delete... Have you, you've seen the deleted scenes, right? Yes. I think there's a lot of stuff that should have been kept in. Mm-hmm. But I can understand why some stuff was cut. But um, I don't think it should have been savage the way it was because it. Okay, Nathan, if I told you, hey, this is a fun, quirky show, it kind of, but it kind of has this beginning of this that's surrounded by um, at the center of it is this really tragic, um, you know, young teenage girl who was brutally assaulted and murdered. Mm-hmm. Now we're gonna do a movie about this quirky show. It's gonna have some of the same quirks, but it's gonna be about the last week of her life, including her death. Would you go into that movie expecting something perfectly happy? Because that's the thing. So far, it hasn't been all that quirky. I know. Like, you have the guy dancing in the, in the hall, and now <laughs> you have a lady with an eye patch well, for no reason. But. Oh, and um, that's and here's another <laughs> thing about those two um, um, actors. They start their husband and wife in this show. Then, in uh, Wes Craven's The People Under the Stairs, oh, yeah. they are husband and wife again. Huh. Or ra- somebody's a fan. Time. Yeah, People on the Stairs is a fucking good movie. Well, I was gonna actually, I would, no, I was gonna ask when it comes to the dancing guy, what's the story? Dale Cooper. Look at that handsome motherfucker. Look at I, that I, chin. I, 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 I do not know if you, you were you at a Becca's Halloween party last year. Yes, I was. You were dressed I as was Agent Dale Cooper. I was. I was Mario. Oh yeah, and uh, Sammy was Luigi. Yeah, my you were Marwin, and yeah. she was Luigi. Yes, and Nathan, which was is a little weird. Nathan Drake. You were yes, Nathan. yes, of course, you're Nathan Drake. I was Nathan Drake. Huh? Nathan is Nathan Drake. And I pitched this to you, um, but if they, because I always felt like, you know who would have been the perfect person to cast Fifty Shades of Grey? Him. Yeah. He would have been perfect. Because, number one, I know he can act. Number two, I know he can do the cold, sexual, As the main guy, guy. as Mr. Yeah. Grey. Now, you know what else he's done? Yeah, but he's too old, and you need to well, get... Well, I mean, back if they now, had but I mean, you, want, like, you want women to go in the theater and figure themselves in their seats while they're watching hot yeah. young hunk chiseled yeah. on the big screen. Yeah, but just that everyone... And Kyle MacLachlan yeah, doesn't... Does that, there, okay, there's just some great meme that says, um, Fifty Shades of Grey, a movie about s and for people who are bad at fucking. Yeah. I would like to take it you know, a little bit further. <laughs> Fifty Shades of Grey, nine and a half weeks for people who are bad at fucking. I know it's good. It's good I know. Gag. I just didn't know if you were laughing at me or at the show. Oh, both. Yeah. It's a little bit of calm. Okay. And then another thing about our comic block is, um, I think mainly I haven't seen him do anything like this except for maybe in Blue Velvet, where he plays someone who's just so straight up nice, good, all strong moral fiber. This is like, but there is another role where he does it. And there's an animated movie called Justice League New Frontier where he voices Superman. Yep. And he's really good. Uh, but as I was going to say, um, this is spoiler territory, but for a future commentator's episode, we will be watching Fifty Shades of Grey. It will happen. Please, God, no. Why? Why? Well, I'll tell you. Because. Because I said so, God damn it. Oh, God. No. See, this is why you have to have a nuclear Ugh. option, Nathan. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, because the I, thing is, I have seen I've seen the film. I've seen and actually I've seen it too. This, you did? Yes. You saw Fifty Shades of Grey. So Why? So I'm for free. <laughs> Had a free. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was for free. I, I paid for it. I paid that my wife and a big old box of popcorn. See, um, one reason this scene was even here. You put that pot, You put pop, popcorn see, right on your lap. See, yeah. yeah. Well, I need yeah, this one. Is need my popcorn. <laughs> see, I, I love this scene. See, now, if it was Kyle MacLachlan right now, yes, cast my future stage of Grey. Yeah. Kyle MacLachlan today, yeah. current age, will be no, 50 there, Grey. There are a couple of reasons why I like this sequence. Of the, it's so memorable. The way they just kind of the walk, they walk up from the distance and come forward. The way they get away, they don't even bother with that bullshit of, I'm a cop and I don't like the FBI. Well, is, you're going to learn to like Isn't me. that one of the scenes we had to do for clients? Yes, and yeah. I, was actually, uh, I was actually on set for one of them helping out somebody uh, direct it in the old film office. And they had to use that 
<laughs> as this. Oh, God. I don't know why this popped in my head, but if you gave him red hair and blue eyes, doesn't he kind of look like Brian? You know what? Our friend Brian? McLaughlin? No, Lee. Well, my, like, there. I don't know why. I'm just thinking of Brian Lee. Looks kind of no, I mean, like, you saying Kyle McLaughlin with red hair would be, look like Brian? Red hair and blue eyes. I don't know. I, I, was, I was getting a Brian vibe from him right there. No, I don't see it. I really don't see it there. Well, if you if you meet if you meet if you met Brian, you would. It would I've seen pictures of Brian. No, but I mean, like interact with him. He kind of. Okay, if you're, if you're talking about you know the way he moves and the way he talks, yeah, that's, that's a different thing. If you're talking about just on looks. I don't see. I do not see Brian Lee in Comic Con. Mm-hmm. My compliment towards Brian. They're like, oh, thank you. Got a big chin. I think they use turtle wax on his hair. Oh, Lord, that's what I use. It's like. Oh God! Can you imagine? Oh, what was the name of that one kid? Benjamin Chan. Can you imagine if he directed any of those scenes from Twin Peaks? I don't remember who that is. Exactly. He was the who guy who. Dr- he was the guy who directed that scene from Longfellow Bridge or Longfellow Deeds, whatever it was. Longfellow Bridge. Longfellow Bridge. Yeah, he did that one. Longfellow scene Deeds with is Adam yeah. Sandler's character yeah, name yeah, in yeah, Mr. Yeah. Deeds. Yeah. <laughs> don't you mean Gary Cooper's character? Okay, this is oh, what's God. gonna. <laughs> And he did that. He did that show with one of the bros. Oh god! But what's coming? Out, it, this isn't a thing that necessarily gets everyone. But what he's going to do next, it, it freaks me out. You know he's a detective because he has a magnifying. Glass. His magnifying glass has a light on it that's, that makes him a super detective. That's so futuristic. Can you imagine how many more cases Sherlock Holmes would have solved if his magnifying glass had a light on it? And if he wasn't such a fucking pussy. <laughs> Gee, I wonder if that guy's gonna Thanks, Grizzly to... Adams. Oh, gee, I wonder if that guy's going to have anything to do with the rest of the show. <laughs> Probably not, because they only showed him for a second. Yeah. <laughs> In close-up where you can see his face clearly. Oh, it's Gordon Lightfoot. I've got cotton swabs in my ears. Terrible. Terrible. Look at that tie. That is beautiful. Now we're going to own one of those. Now things. we're going to I learn. that tie. We're going to learn the art of, aut- of autopsy. So just remember, I want I want to match that tie with there. the policeman's jacket. FBI. This old house with Bob Peter. <laughs> Dr. Lawrence Jacoby, did you Cooper? Jacoby Ellsbury? Here comes more suspects. Yes, I do. Why would you want to? Sort of against procedure. Okay, now we can say we're getting into quirky territory. Yeah. <laughs> this doctor's one hundred percent quirk. And remember, oh, happy cuts sense. with your happy knife. <laughs> you don't have enough Hawaiian girls on your ties. Oh, that. This is actually... <laughs> a, <laughs> yeah, <it's, laughs> He's see, fingering the Hawaiian girl. It's, <laughs> no, it's great. Beautiful. And see, they got uh, away with Dr. that. Dr. Jacoby is actually the long-lost father of Flint Ironstein. <laughs> <laughs> that see, just happened? I want, to see, I want to see murder doctors now. Just Flint Ironstein <laughs> as a doctor. Well, the, you know what I always wanted? I always wanted to, I can't, we, I'm sad we never got to do it, but I always wanted to oh, do the murder They're doing the though. autopsy. Oh, this that's, okay, this was not supposed to happen. That's a, isn't that the, the lights? Was it supposed yeah. to happen? Yeah, and, and Lynch liked it. And then there's a... Um, but that's usually a staple of his yeah. flickering lights. And then I think, I don't know if we missed it or not, but there, there's a sequence where um, uh, that extra thinks um, McLaughlin's... Jim, uh, would you leave us alone? That was not supposed to happen. What the what that guy thought um, he said was a uh, thought comment. McLaughlin said was, "What's your name?" He said, "Jim." <laughs> and McLaughlin just kind of pushed through, but Lynch liked it. Yeah. Ah, 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 fuck, fuck, fuck. Oh God! Look how deep yeah. it's going. Fuck! Shut the fuck up. Oh jeez! <laughs> I will jam this coke glass up your ass. Stop. I've done this. <laughs> okay. Um. Well, mention what happened, Kevin. <laughs> I, I can't... No, you mentioned it. I'm not looking at the screen. Okay, Nathan, you mentioned it. Uh, we lost some uh, recording time, so we had to backtrack exactly to the part where they're pulling shit out of her fingernails. Because you see... Right where Cameron doesn't want to look at the screen. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect point to start up recording again. <laughs> Maybe turn the camera toward... Not the camera, but the computer towards us so we can... Yes, that's what I'm doing. Cause <laughs> yeah. So sorry, folks. But yeah, I'd be sorry. I'd be sorry. Yeah, you are sorry. <laughs> we had to go through fingernail pulling again. 
He like and, uh, on this ball. And <laughs> Sam is actually referenced a little bit in uh, Fire Walk with me. You can find you'll find out why Cooper doesn't think he's on the ball. Why? He uh, uh, remember the character played by Kiefer Sutherland? Yeah. That's Sam. Oh, why would well, to anyone who hasn't seen it, why is he not on the ball? Because he's kind of crazy. <laughs> there you go. Well, you should actually. I'm sorry. The correct answer is because he's Kiefer Sutherland. <laughs> no, because wouldn't he be on the eight ball then? Oh. They got some fine. They got some fine Boston Lager in peace. David, I don't think you should be drinking right now. Why not? Because uh, you're kind because of you're an alcoholic. alcoholic. Yeah, you're an alcoholic. <laughs> I am not an alcoholic. That's your. I can stop beer. anytime I want. Yeah, That's, right. That is your eighth beer. <laughs> it is not in thirty minutes. That's a great uh, heirs cash sign they've got on the wall. It's not. <laughs> I'm going to point out that, that <gasps> this beer is from... See, he's already hiccuping, because that's his eighth beer. <laughs> this beer is from, um... This from the, beer is from a bottle? That's where beers come from? No, this is a Wild Wild West beer. <laughs> so when we recorded this all the way back in February? In case you didn't realize, it's Wild Wild West? Yeah, or March. a while back. Yeah. A wild while back. You need a lot of beers to get through Wild Wild West. Here comes Eric Stoltz again. He's upset that he got fired from Back to the Future. I just imagined him just to go back to Quest for a Fire. Well, I'm not your buddy, friend. Well, I'm not your friend, guy. I'm, I'm not, not your guy, guy, buddy. I'm not your buddy, friend. <laughs> well, you can pick your nose and you can pick your boyfriend. Yep. But you can't pick your boyfriend's yep. nose. Someone has to swab out my eye hole. Yes, honey. Yes, yes, you look like a dick today. Oh, wait, now I get it from because later on, back to your head's gonna fall down there and end up in the bank. <laughs> like I said, he's that that movie Silver Bullet that he's in is hysterical. And uh, don't tell my nephew I'm a better actor than he is. <laughs> Such it is bitches. so weird to see him and people under the stairs in full S and M gear. <laughs> <laughs> it really <laughs> is. Definitely check it out. It's a very underrated Wes Craven film. You just are, those really marshmallow, <laughs> are those marshmallow peeps? Maybe. But he's very meticulous how he does that, right? Because you got a feeling that he put it on the table just so then he can pick it up that way. Mm -hmm. Diane. She was, I, I still believe that his tape recorder is named Diane. That's, that's but, uh, too David Lynch of a thing but to not have. <laughs> Diane, you, Diane's in the offices of the, in the movie. Ah, no, I don't believe but it. But here's a question then. <laughs> Do we meet Diane? <laughs> yes and no. Well, not in the show. On the show, no. <laughs> in Twin Peaks as a whole, kind of. And then he stuck his finger up my hey. Oh, and oh, a mysterious key. And what's one of the other recurring themes throughout David Lynch's movies? Heroin. That they're weird. <laughs> Close. They have Kyle McLaughlin. Yeah. Keys. Yeah. Just keys. Keys. Not to keys. Now, are you disappointed that Twin Peaks, because it was on TV, had no butt shots? No. I mean, look at his chin. That's 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 an ass right there. Look at that. Now, Laura Palmer, you know, in case he hasn't hasn't you know been given to. Are those seriously? Okay, I think those are marshmallow peeps. Oh, chocolate bunnies. <laughs> See that is because you need. Diane, in my hand, I'm, in my hand, I'm holding a twelve pack of chocolate bunnies. I don't know where they came from, but I'm holding them. Gotcha. And it goes from right from chocolate bunnies to the uh, to the um, crime scene of a rape and murder. Now, I'm trying to remember if I mentioned this in the previous commentary we had while it was recorded. 
that David Lynch is an, a you know was a painter and working with a canvas, and he's working in Academy ratio, so he has to put all that information in a very limited scope mm -hmm. so there like he's able to create this wonderful image of you don't really necessarily have to see him crying because you got the little you know tears falling down you've got from behind him it's a it's a truck right or a train yeah. but it looks train, yeah. it looks ragged and disgusting uh, yeah, well, like all, that. a lot of the things they want to hammer home about you know Laura Palmer was everyone thought she was this incredibly kind sweet natured uh, girl she uh, did tutoring to people to teach them English as a second language special education tutoring she was on meals she did meals on wheels oh yeah so she's like this, to the town she's this ultimate angel you know pretty much the way we all see Michael Brown mm -hmm. the ultimate uh, dude I'm, I'm convinced Mike, I'm convinced Michael Brown is a pervert I'm convinced I'm from, no, here's the reason why I'm convinced. <laughs> David, I'm from, okay, David, like, like Harry Truman said, you yeah. don't know Michael Brown. <laughs> I'm convinced. I know about those Midwestern boys. I was a Midwest. I'm from. Uh, I'm a Midwestern boy too. I'm from. And I'm a pervert. So yeah, that is your evidence. Yeah, but you're, you have a, you're open about your love of dildos. <laughs> no, no. Once I did point point this out earlier, but had to mention it so everyone hear it. He we, looks like every, every douchebag douche from eighth grade to middle school, years. high school, you name it. There's always that one guy that everybody agreed he was a douche. <laughs> and you know what's funny? Um, you know that show uh, Psych on USA? Mm -hmm. Yes. They did a uh, Twin Peaks tribute, and he was on there, and he was playing a, uh, the friendly owner of the local diner. Huh. Like really, really almost Dale Cooper levels of, ha of smiles and happiness. Hey, remember when our remote controls had a wire attached? Yeah, I think I mentioned that last time. Yeah. <laughs> That's because we went back to the past. To play some city games that suck ass? Well, if you didn't, then... Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Did you know Laura was <laughs> I was seeing a bunch of pictures on Facebook. They're having a special 30th anniversary for Back to the Future oh. on Fremont Street. So there's a couple of DeLoreans back there, the Black Truck and Christopher Lloyd and... Uh, What's your face, Leah? Leah, Leah Thompson. Thompson. Wait, the, yeah. wait. When is that? When is that? Right now? Right now. Yeah. Okay. Really? Let's go. It might be happening all weekend. I'm not sure. Okay. But um, you did know. You do know that the DeLorean was at that Comic Con last year a couple weeks ago, right? I don't know. I've seen the DeLorean before. They were letting you in the DeLorean. <gasps> I've been inside of the DeLorean before. Not the time travel one, but I've been. Inside no, it was the, the time travel one. Yeah, yeah. And they let you drive it around. <laughs> Nick Stahl, the early years. I drove that and the Batmobile. Oh my god. The Adam West Batmobile? Yeah. Nice. Actually, both those cars were there. She's with her. She's with the man. I almost bought uh, Marty McFly a Back to the Future 2 hat, but I didn't have the I have that hat. I didn't have the scratch. I have that my hat. sister got me that hat for. Uh, Wait, who are the guys who had that hat? Birthday. Y me and this guy. The High connection. Five. And doesn't Andrew B.C. have it too? Yes, he does, but he's in Connecticut or New York. So, so I Cameron, can't... if you buy one, we can all wear them while doing commentaries yeah. for Back to the Future. We have Back to the Future. Oh I, what if you guys? What if you guys wear the? What if you guys wear the hat and I wear two ties? <laughs> ah, that can work. Or the life preserver. Do you ever think they'll remake Back to the Future? Oh, I know, you know what I honestly think is more likely to happen? And what? I can actually see it happening? Okay. Back to the Future 4 with okay. Marty as the new Doc Brown? No, no, no. No, no, no. Nothing like that. See, Dark uh, see uh, Leah Thompson has a daughter. Mm -hmm. uh, I think her name is Zoe something. And she looks a lot like her mom. Uh, just make Back to the Future five, uh, five with, with uh, you know Leah Thompson's daughter playing uh, Mary McFly, Marty's daughter. And have the uh, the new Doc Brown be uh, Jules and Vern. Boom. Because mm -hmm. if you okay, I'll go back to nineteen eighty five. And let me, and, and let me just make this clear: I don't want any new Back to the Future movies. Of course, but not. if no I would, does. but if you put a gun in my head and say, and then went, sequel or reboot, I'll go sequel. <laughs> I genuinely can't. I genuinely don't see how you could not like Sherilyn Fenn in this. Hmm. Is she autistic? No, she's just a fucking troublemaker. <laughs> I poke the coffee. I, I wonder what will happen when see, I take this pencil out. Yeah, see, see, I, I hate that new that new uh, trend where you know no character can just be a troublemaker. They have to be you know oh um, ADD. Look how short that skirt is. What a tramp. 
goes all the way to her knees. <laughs> See, I like that. She's dressing. She's just very conservatively, but she there's just some aura. I mean, well, well, basically, you're referring to the idea that everything has to be um, politically correct. That you yeah. can't be can't can't be offensive. Yeah, because it kind of ignores in real life. Some people just like fucking shit up. Yeah, or some people, some people just want to watch the world. Or, or just that's the thing though. Like, if you present a character who's a troublemaker, that doesn't mean that you, as the artist, as the creator, approve of what they're doing. No. They're just showing this is a character. Like, like, I mean, like, like very early Bart Simpson. Yeah, or, or for example, like when they made Mississippi Burning, I don't think that when they cast Michael Rooker and Brad Dourif as freaking racists, that they're like, <laughs> "Yep, we approve of them killing black people." <laughs> no. Uh, right here, these are all um, uh, her, uh, Audrey Horn's father's Norwegian business partners. And um, he wanted the, the Laura Palmer stuff kept from them. And now she's telling them. She's just flat out like, oh, by the way. My friend she died. She got murdered. <laughs> my friend died. And they found her body and she was naked. <laughs> That's what, I love Audrey. She just fucks with people. <laughs> It's still so, it's so sad that Cheryl, Cheryl Finn didn't get like the big movie because she does have a good classic movie quality about her. Yeah, yeah you know. Um, I'm telling okay, you, it's, okay, it's, this is like this is I think coming from yeah. her, and I don't necessarily see any reason for her necessary to lie about it. Do you think it's because she became a mom and she was like become mom first? No, no. I, okay, Mulholland Drive. That was originally meant to have Audrey Horn in the lead. Really? Yeah. I'm actually kind of glad they didn't. I do like the fact because that it's a also, story. And also, it wasn't meant to be a movie. It was meant to be a spinoff of Twin Peaks. Hmm. Huh. So it wasn't its own tele when it was developed as a television series. Yeah, and then it didn't work out. And, uh, but, 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 but it was supposed to be, so Mahal and Dry was in the same world as Twin Peaks? Originally, yes. Except okay. it was going to be Audrey in the lead. So who, Naomi Watts played Audrey? or Well, the character that Naomi Watts played originally began as Audrey. Okay. I'm kind of glad they didn't. I like the fact it's own separate world. But you did hear about the Roger Ebert theory. I think I told you where he believed that Lynch deliberately made it that way so he could get financing to make the movie he wanted. It could be. And I mean, and recently with the recent um, kind of, I, I'm going to call it a power play that Lynch did on uh, the, the upcoming season of Twin Peaks, I can definitely see that happening now. After all that, teenage girls having fun. <laughs> She's a wonderful actress, Cameron. What are you on about? She, okay, she can be good. <laughs> I'm not saying she can't be good. All I'm saying is I like Moira Kelly better in the role. Yeah. Because when you look at what Laura Palmer is, like this really dark, tragic, sad figure, you know, you know, sexual abuse. Murdered, heavy into drug use and all that, prostitution. Moira Kelly, just from the look of her face, just the way from the way Moira, Moira Kelly's face is kind of built, she just inherently looks more innocent. Just like when you put Michael Brown next to Nathan, you know Nathan's the pervert. <laughs> and Michael Brown is the corn fed all American boy. <laughs> Nathan is the gin soaked pervert. <laughs> It is Jen, right? Uh, sure. I always thought that. I always thought that Nathan looked like a more likable Will Ferrell. I definitely have the same body type. That's for sure. <laughs> well, I don't mean like in terms of look, but it's sort of like <laughs> well, Will Ferrell's kind of might be off-putting to some people when he does his persona. Mm -hmm. But you could get away with it because you got his kind of handsome quality. I can get away with it because I'm not thinking. Because you're blonde and blue eyes, right? It's like okay, well, Will Ferrell. You are the Uber clown. <laughs> yep. Well, you know what's you know what's really weird. And I, if I ever got the chance to like interview Cheryl Lee at all, the one question I would want to ask her is: Do you find did you find it odd at the time when you're doing all these photo shoots for Twin Peaks? They had you shoot um, some photos where you're essentially nude, wearing plastic wrapping, imitating when you were found dead on the show. Because I, I like when I'm trying because I'm trying to, when I was trying to find images yeah. to put for this commentary together. I typed in Twin Peaks, and there was like image after image of Cheryl Lee, where like you know you see her bare shoulders, she's mm -hmm. looking at the camera, smiling, and she's wrapped in the same kind of plastic that she is mm -hmm. at the beginning of the show, and that just seems so fucking creepy to me <laughs> because she, cause it's, because obviously when you see her on the show, she's dead, she's, mm -hmm. uh, but when she's in those photos, she's like, 
<laughs> oh Jesus! I'm, and I'm and I'm not even saying that. She, and obviously, Cheryl is not an unattractive young lady in this. Mm. But it's bringing to mind the fact that you found her fucking dead after a brutal torture, rape, murder, <laughs> murder, death, kill, with the three seashells. Now I was going to ask you this question, Cameron, about the dancing guy. What's the story behind him? The guy at the high school? Yeah, why do you dance? I don't know. Because well, he just... he's in a David Lynch show. Yeah. <laughs> well, why... Well, David, why did you dance in Game Boo? Because he's retarded. <laughs> the character's... In, oh, I'm sorry. The I need to be PC. He's a very, he's speci he's no, a very need, special you, you, individual. You need to be PC. He's fucking retarded. Okay. No, he's effing retarded. I just like that she's so happy she's ruined her dad's business. Yeah. You know he's Norwegian because he's got that hat. <laughs> That's she, how you can tell. Audrey Horn is like an irresistibly sexy do, Bart do you see? Do you see a little bit of Jennifer Goodwin in her? Oh, yeah, totally. Like, they could have been, like, like mother and daughter. Especially maybe. with the, the really short hair. Yeah. Oh, that's something. Because my, my wife watches Once Upon a Time, and every time Jennifer Goodwin shows up, I go, why'd they let the little boy on the set? And then I feel really guilty. Oh, no. You she's should cute. feel guilty. So for the short hair, and she See, I am boy. pissed that for my Dale Cooper costume, I could not get a trench coat. <laughs> that pissed me off so much. Cause that's a badass trench coat. <laughs> so someone was renailing some boards. <laughs> and you know, when he when he watched this scene as a kid, this is how um, JJ Abrams fell in love with lens flare. Da, da. <laughs> as a kid, oh, he, oh honey, he was writing regarding Henry at this time. Yeah. JJ Abrams wrote regarding Henry. Yeah. He's, a, he's even in the movie. He plays the delivery boy. He delivers yeah. Harrison Ford uh, like some Chinese food or something. We s swear to God. I'm not kidding. Yeah. yeah. It's true. J.J. Abrams wrote regarding Henry. I, th I think that was like his breakout script. Yeah. That we broke into the business. Yeah, he was like, Henry. what, 22, 23? He was in his 20s, yeah. Yeah, he was just a kid. But there's no mystery in that. <laughs> there's no mystery box. <laughs> but a giant smoke monster doesn't attack Harrison Ford. Yeah, it did. It attacked his brain, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it made him tarted. It's a bullet monster instead that goes into his skull. It made him tarted. <laughs> it's got the tard. <laughs> Thorg hurt. Thorg? I do like that movie though, Garden Henry. It's 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 kinda sappy, but but it works. Yeah. I like it. I like the story that John Wazamo told told about it where people were so pissed off at Mike Nichols and his attitude throughout the making of the film that they found out where his tea or coffee was and they took turns pissing in it. Uh, that's funny. Did that include Ford? Uh, that's a good question. And there's Nathan. Not as a kid, but nowadays. <laughs> that's how Nathan passes the time waiting for new Doctor Who. <laughs> I thought he does that while watching Doctor Who. <laughs> well, Why? Why? Why do they keep time chess? It's the same plot for every episode. Uh. I get it, he's quirky. <laughs> I get it, Peter Capaldi's very angry. <laughs> yes, bow ties are cool, God. I'm kind of glad that, 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 the, that the quirkiness kind of dropped with Capaldi, Doctor. Oh, just, me too, I love he, Capaldi. Where, where he's just so tired of that bullshit. Mm -hmm. And that's a deer's head. He's just a cranky old Scottish mm -hmm. guy now. I think it's great. <laughs> it fell down from the ceiling. I like when you how you can see where it was mounted, and there's no way it could have fallen down like that. Well, she might but it doesn't it matter because it's David Lynch and he's an artist and blah blah blah. It's fucking bullshit. Sometimes things need to make sense. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, like the all important deer head absolutely <laughs> needs to make sense. Why don't you go watch your favorite movie, Man of Steel? <laughs> oh, God. Not until I'm forced to. You will be. <laughs> you will be. Poor fool. Only at the end do you understand. 
The man of steel sucks. <laughs> no, it's awesome. It's really not. Yes, it really is. But we can save that for another commentary. And uh, this is Laura Palmer's... Uh, oh, this I'm afraid that Man of Steel will be quite operational <laughs> when your Blu-ray arrives. This was uh, Laura Palmer's uh, safety deposit box. That's her and, porn. And, yeah, that's actually uh, where she advertised her services. Along with Renette Pulaski. and of course, I still don't get why there's a picture of the semi truck. Maybe where? Is also, it? Why is there a picture of a guy there? Like, Dar. <laughs> Maybe that's supposed to be where you're supposed to meet, or how yeah. you can identify, oh, how that you can identify the truck. And that is like pure cusp of the end of '80s hair. <laughs> I, I was actually going to say his I, hair is making the transition. No, we, we've seen a couple of film his students. Regenerating. We've seen a couple of film students with hair like that. <laughs> like that Baruffy guy. I've. No, I like David Lynch because I understand what he's totally getting at. And if you don't understand, then you're just a typical American viewer. You just don't understand classic European film. Yeah, or as they call cinema. That sounds like a lot of film students I've met. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's the one thing I was always afraid of, just because I have this encyclopedic knowledge of it. I don't want to be that guy who's going to be like... You, oh, you don't understand. You just don't understand. It's like, no, I just don't like it. Yeah, you, you just know, don't I, like you it. Know, and I have to remember something when we, uh, when people were shooting this scene. I actually don't know how often any of the directors got across the fact that he's figuring out she's cheating on him. Because mm-hmm. I always, because it always came across that um, when they were directing it, that he was mad because he was obsessive compulsive and mm-hmm. like two different. Brands. That's that's one of the scenes I always want to direct. I always wanted to direct for the class, but never got a chance to. I like that scene. See when we got to, when the, uh, Twin Peaks was added to that rotation, I was so giddy and happy because it wasn't the same shit. The same script. Was it Longfellow Bridge or Longfellow uh, Bridge or what was the other one? The what was it called Possession? Weatherby. No, Weatherby is the God. worst fucking screenplay ever. Keenan, Keenan, if you're listening to this, uh. Weatherby sucks now. It sucked then. It'll always suck. And, and I already blew my load with my story of Weatherby, so I'm not going to... I, I, rem- I remember in class, uh, either Menendez or someone was telling about how <laughs> Longfellow Bridge was written by the guy who wrote Sleepless in Seattle. It was his follow-up script. You know, the one he wrote after Sleepless in, yeah, Sleepless in Seattle was a big wait, hit. Wait. So it went out to all the studios. There was going to be a big bidding war because, oh, it's the next script from the what? guy who wrote Sleepless well, in I Seattle. Thought, and then uh-huh. nobody bid on it because it was such a shitty script. I thought, wait, did Nora Ephron write Sleepless in Seattle? Or did she direct that? Wait, did she, she directed direct, it. She, directed but she didn't it. write it. No. She didn't write it. No. Huh. That's weird. And here we're getting the updates on everybody in the town. Of who's who. Of who done it. And I still love how funny this is because <laughs> she's right there. <laughs> it's just in between them. And yeah, it's honey. If you're watching this, your Jack Nance looks like your dad, the white version of your dad. <laughs> All right, you whippersnappers, quiet. Matlock has something to say. Matlock. Can you imagine how screwed the Simpsons would be if uh, Dan Castle and Ella left? Oh man. They would, they would have to end the show. All right, so Sarah Jessica Parker walked into a, a barn, and the farmer said, Horsey, why the long face? Who's uh, Sarah Jessica uh, Parker? Uh, <laughs> you didn't watch Flight of the Navigator? <laughs> Is this thing on? Uh, uh, no one's laughing at You the suck, jokes. McBain! <laughs> Jesus Christ. Here's my impersonation of Laura Palmer. I'm a stupid slut and I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that'd go over real well with the crowd. You <laughs> suck, McBang! <laughs> Boring. I just imagine it start like a bidding war. Okay, who wants Laura Palmer's body? Who wants Laura Palmer's body? I got one dollar here. I got one dollar here. I got one dollar here. And sold to the man for $20. Twenty dollars cheaper than what you pay would pay for in life. Oh. But I'm psh- <laughs> Run it, Pulaski. Who am I? <laughs> what is life? What is a man? Just a miserable pile of secrets. You are the leaders of this community. It is vitally important. 
problems at this nocturne. That's in why I'm announcing my but presidential run. But we have a which problem? Yes. A temporary curfew for those under 18 years of age. My <laughs> log's only five. <laughs> why is the Asian lady here? We don't allow them here. Okay, David, let, stop, putting, stop putting your personal politics hey. into, into this. Hey, I love the Japanese. We, 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 know, this, we know the real reason Keenan isn't allowed over here. Aw, <laughs> it's because he's somewhere else. Yeah, uh-huh. I'm not going to bust you know, money to pay for his ticket. To yeah, yeah, that, that explains why he wasn't allowed in your house the last time he was here. Yeah, mm-hmm, yeah. David hates the Asians. Mm-hmm. He calls them a bad name that rhymes with mook. That is not true. <laughs> yeah, and then everybody watches the Game Move episode when I do Mr. Yeah, exactly. Yamato. Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, I'm fucked. Da- it's like David always says, rice has three different uses. Eating, throwing at weddings, and throwing at Asians. Oh my God. I can't believe he would say something like that. That is ugly ass part. David cut that rose. David calls like God. Roses, David yeah. calls Godzilla his Fuhrer. Oh my god! <laughs> what is like this joke? What do you call twenty thousand Japanese at the bottom of the ocean? David, we're trying to do a commentary. <laughs> Screw it. Why are you talking about such a good start? Jesus Christ! Holy shit! <laughs> What? <laughs> I don't believe it. It's like one of the stupidest racist jokes ever. Oh god! I have to turn away from you. No, <laughs> I'm here. I'm alone now. And see, that's what he just said is proof of why Keenan is not allowed over here. Mm-hmm. Hey, look, young Seth Green. David, what do you call an Asian man flying a plane? The know. pilot, you racist. <laughs> Jeez. What the hell? How did, why did you even say, I don't know? I was going to say, I don't know. What do you call? <laughs> God. Zilla. <laughs> See? You just, you just can't like... <sighs> I don't know why I had to say Godzilla by sticking out your two front teeth. That was really <laughs> racist. <laughs> and then you had to put on a rice hat. <laughs> Hey, if Mickey Rooney can get away with it. Yeah. <laughs> I should get away with it, too. No, because they're not Mickey Rooney. Not everybody's four foot two. He was the number one child star from 1939 to 1940. That spans two decades. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Seth Green is funnier here than he's ever been on Robot Chicken. <laughs> I hate robot chicken. Robot chicken's alright. It has its moments. I like the full blossom. I was gonna ask, what were they? I'm trying. I'm struggling to remember a bit that I like. And I, I like. Uh, I like the Star Wars episode they did. Oh, the George Lucas thing I've was seen, funny. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they did a really good uh, music video for Weird Al. Um, I think they, the weasel stomping dead. I think they've stolen yeah. so many jokes I've sent to them. They have not paid me for them. Like the one where Darth Vader farts. Or the one where um, Batman farts. <laughs> or the one where um, Spider-Man farts. <laughs> I think they've used all those jokes. They haven't paid me once. <laughs> Are you sure your friend's not drunk? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not, but my friend is. <laughs> I don't know why. He just he had a blue velvet binge and he wants to dance like that. Okay, <laughs> don't tell the doctor... <laughs> That the one who's doing most of the driving is the guy teetering while standing on the car hood. Hey, he did ask him if he was drinking and driving. Yeah. So he was telling the truth. I'm not drinking and driving, but he is. I'm just driving along. Uh, that makes it okay. Okay. What is? I would like to see some mouse with a with a blade plan of any kind. <laughs> boo boo doo doo. Come on, I gotta surf up my car some more. Whoa! Oh, it's like I'm catching a wave. Whoa, man! I'm gonna fart so bad.
<laughs> just tell me already. Two households. Gentle Verona. Stop with your Lynchian dialogue and just tell me. <laughs> you kids with your Lynchian dialogue and your Dan Fogelberg. <laughs> Why do you smell like cancer? We'll find her. Um, that sounded a little bit rapey to me, kid. <laughs> uh, can I have a, a, a Coke for please? No, George Lucas. No, no more Coke. They're gonna go watch Roadhouse. Oh, okay. And then they almost ran over Edward Scissorhands. Roadhouse 2 3D. Did Why she, haven't they done Did she ever yet? leave that office? <laughs> Would you? <laughs> Do 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 do. I'm patching you through now, Doctor Hayward. <laughs> Are you patched through yet? Hold on, I'll patch you through. Hello, I oh, Stuart, I messed up. You rest easy now. I'm gonna put on all the clothes. We'll keep our eyes peeled. Thanks, Harry. You bet. I just imagine Dale Cooper about to be like, oh, is this a cop car? Can you turn on the lights? Whee! <laughs> he does that about everything. It's like, is this a refrigerator? Let's make something cold. Wow, that is the most depressing looking bar. Now, what is this? That right here is a song called Falling, and it's set to the theme of Twin Peaks. So essentially, it's the Twin Peaks theme, but with actual lyrics put to it, sung by Julie Cruz. And who is Julie Cruz? A singer. That's it? I don't know much about her other than she's a constant collaborator. She collaborates a lot with What, she has to be more than just a singer? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, well, just well, a singer? Oh, well. Maybe she could have been like a member of the Beatles or something. I don't know. <laughs> David, who are you to judge her career? <laughs> How fucking dare you? I am? Oh, she's just a singer. <laughs> oh, it's, well, it's, it's better than being just a meter maid. A job's a job! What the <laughs> fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> what? Is she, what? Oh, she's just a waitress. <laughs> no, David, she's not. She she's owns, just falling. She owns the diner, so she's not just a waitress. You sexist, racist pig. How am I racist? Do we need to go back to the Asian stuff again? <laughs> Was that a song I'm listening to? Wow. Gee, Willikers, this music is splendorific. As you can see, Skip is largely based on Dale Cooper. And largely based on Mike Brown. What do you call this invention? It's called a muffin, Mike. Oh my goodly goodness! It's so fantabulous! What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, I'm, actually, I'm actually completely lost track now. And this song is called Nightingale. It's by a person who's just a singer. <laughs> Julie Cruz. <laughs> the one and only Julie Cruz. <laughs> what? Does she need to be the <laughs> only they are not old enough to be in this roadhouse. Where that's, a, that's a great thing about about Three Beaks. Like underage people can drink so fucking easily in this town. <laughs> Give me a milk, chocolate. <laughs> Fight! Aw, what? They're closing the FAO Schwartz in New York. I'm surprised it's still open. Where am I going to get my toys now? You go all the way to New York for your toys? Yeah. <laughs> well, he needs to avoid all the dirty races. <laughs> but wait, why'd you go to New York for that? Yeah, what's wrong with you? Wait, what? <laughs> Damn it. Oh, thumbs up. That's another Dale Cooper classic. Now, what do you call this fine establishment? We call it a bar. And what do you sell at this bar? Alcoholic products. Jimmy Junkers. 
I like how your Cooper's borderline retarded. That's how I play it. Yeah, I wouldn't be doing that sort of thing when, you know, there's been a murder. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't help your case. Yeah. You just look like, not only do you look like a dick bag. <laughs> oh. That was it. Okay. <laughs> Pow! Sam! Pow! Lynch! <laughs> Toffee! That's the thing. If I were those two, I would not get in a fight in a biker bar with a biker gang. <laughs> You're all, it'd be so cool if it was, you're all right, daddy-o. <laughs> you're all right, Skippy. Have you seen um, the first season of the Fargo? No, not show yet. That Epix, it is so fucking good. It was amazing. I remember you got upset that Martin Freeman lost. I was really upset that but he didn't But he did win. win an Emmy early that, that evening for Sherlock. While he yeah, but well, he's way better in Fargo, I think, while he, he, hey, while he may have lost an award, he got a huge paycheck for the Hobbit. Oh, absolutely. Well, he got a huge And he's going to be in uh, the new Captain America now. Mm -hmm. I have no clue who he's going to play. I'm, I'm hoping he's MODOK. I'm hoping I am he's... crossing my fingers he's MODOK. I'm hoping he's Spider Man. <laughs> Martin Freeman is Peter Parker. <laughs> That's gonna actually going to be Austin Butterfield. <laughs> Austin Butterfield, Spider Man. I, there's this backlash against him, and I don't understand it. I think he's a really good young actor. Austin Butterfield? Yeah. 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 Because I think he, there's black. Back, Blacklash. Racist! Because, no, no, because, Racist is rubbing off because on there's you. a push to have an African American Spider Man. Because there is one of the. Which is why I said. Which is why I almost said Blacklash. <laughs> but no, there, there was a push to have a more. You know. Well, so, oh, God, ethnically you know, so, diverse well, Spider Man. I remember when they tried to do that, like the but. suggestion of Douglas. Uh, not Douglas. Um, what's his name? Donald Glover. And, he was, and the thing is, Donald, that started as a joke, something, something Donald Glover said. And that could have been good. He would have been good. But then what happened was people would turn out to be a bunch of racist shits. And they're like... See, you know, which, I wouldn't, which I wouldn't mind them doing a different... Not Peter Parker, Spider-Man, yeah, like one if, of the like other Spider-Mans. Because they like, like they, they've they, done Peter Parker to death now. Like if, there was, like if they did Miles Morales. And, mm. you know, then yeah, there you got to... You, there, you have yourself an African-American Spider-Man. Actually, African-American as And he's also Latino as well. Yeah. But, the thing, but, here, but here's, the, here's the thing. I am pretty much... a against like most race switching because it seems like such a ta like a bare ta you know a you mean you mean if they had still kept it Peter Parker but just made him just made African American him, yeah that would be yeah. that's going to be insulting especially if Miles Morales is, as a character exists yeah it already exists yeah. Yeah. yeah and it just seems to me like a desperate pl a ploy to go hey look we're progressive look what we did mm -hmm. it's like um, with the you know Fantastic Four I would almost believe that they were that they were doing that to be progressive if they had made Sue uh, Johnny's sister also African American. Well, they're not progressive in terms of they adopted her. Oh well, yeah, so now they can have three white people and one token. That's exactly. They, they did that with uh, Saturday Night Live. I think it was last year, or the year before, mm -hmm. when the season started. There were a lot of complaints, like there's no black women in the cast, and they're all like, "Well, it's because we didn't." see any that we thought were good enough to be on the show mm -hmm. and then like three or four episodes in they decided to hire a black female comedian and then they put her in every single sketch see, and, and, see, and, Ghostbusters. and see th that's the thing that they, which and, there, I mean there's nothing wrong no, with that but because there was controversy yeah, like it, it like feels it, like they were forced to like if it. like if in like you know the next season like somebody had auditioned and she fucking killed mm -hmm. blew away then this is, that's the thing with like SNL. I honestly believe with SNL, it's 100%. If you come in and you fucking kill, you ace that audition, mm -hmm. then nothing's keeping you off that show. But then you have to be ready for the fierce competition yeah. Yeah. that it takes to be a member of the cast. And this is the other scene we constantly did in, in the class. Oh, yeah, I remember this scene. How bad did they fuck this one up? Actually, this was the scene that was done right most often. It was, it was, it was usually with... The thing they would mess up, people mess up the most with is the lighting. Yeah. It was supposed to be shot at night, so you'd have to, like, order a bunch of lights. The only person I remember that did anything, was, I can't remember the guy's name, but he actually ordered a generator to get a good, mm -hmm. so he could hook up yeah. the lights properly. He rented a generator. Oh! 
Don, Laura's I, best I love, friend. I love the, uh, and the subtitles of Donna moaning. <laughs> but what's this? Oh, I bet this is going to cause some trauma later on. <laughs> Wait, what's he sorry for? Kissing her. Oh, okay. We were too busy talking about a black Spider-Man. Uh, I lost I'd, I'd track of what's happening. In I'd you know, I'd watch it, but at the same time, I'm glad it's a Teenage Peter Parker, and I'm also glad about this. They're not doing an origin this time. Are they gonna oh, keep getting yes. younger? So then the next time, so the next one they fuck up, and then he's gonna be like eight. No, I think I know. I'm with <laughs> them going for the younger high school Peter Parker, just because if they want to do it for the long run, they have that guy secured so they can do college era Peter. They can have him in high school <laughs> and college. Getting something that looks young works. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, college Peter Parker. <laughs> I'm ugly. I'm ugly. I ain't got no so alibi. I'm ugly. I'm ugly. <laughs> Boo! You've never heard a cheer. You've never heard a high school cheerleading team do that cheer. Oh, I've heard it. You've never seen Bicentennial Man. You've never, never <laughs> seen Family Guy. Wait, what? <laughs> You've never seen First Blood. <laughs> I haven't? <sighs> Say what? You've never seen Bob the Clown. <laughs> of course I have. Many You're times. one of the few. Aww. <laughs> is she wearing a World War I flight jacket? So what if she is? Did she come She's off a... that set with Tony's a little short? Like she was what? like the wife of oh. Michael, Michael Brown. Oh. I'm still lost. It's a short that Tony did a couple years ago. Okay. Where Michael Brown played a soldier. Oh yeah, I was. It was his grandpa, right? I played one of the Nazis. <laughs> I get typecast a lot because of my blonde hair and blue eyes. Yeah, you were playing the role that David was born to play. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Even though I have brown hair, David is much more method than hey, I. Hey, hey, Hitler didn't have blonde hair and blue oh, eyes. Oh my God. Yeah, but Hitler can grow a mustache. You so can do. Wow, that has got to be the brightest dashboard I've ever seen in my entire life. Around, but the lights are off. We have a continuity error. There's no, with David Lynch, there's no They probably did it on purpose. Yeah, with David Lynch, there's no such thing as a continuity error. It's just artsy. Yeah. <laughs> artsy fartsy. You know what's really weird? When you get that shot from behind before they cut back to Lord Film World turn, turning around, it really looks like that's a dude in a wig. <laughs> it really does, because that hair does not look real until she turns around. <laughs> run! Run, James! Fly! Make like, fly, you fool! Make like rabbits! Contact, buddy. Doc, I'm going to release you, but I want to back up here for questions for a single You're a disgrace to this family. Now, now David, keep, now, now, uh, keep your horrible comments in when you see the Native American officer. Keep those in check. Oh, Jesus Christ. Keep your hatred in check. I ought to have you know that I have Native American ancestry. Yeah, just like every other mall chick. <laughs> How do you know? I am like one at Chaka. How do you know that my great 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 grandmother was a Cherokee apprentice? <laughs> oh, you guys got an Indian in you? Would you like to? <laughs> like my dad said, oh, yeah, you got Native American blood. Okay, which tribe? I still don't know which tribe. <laughs> So which means either two things. Either he is telling the truth and he doesn't know, or he's bullshitting. Ancestry.com, that's all it takes. Yeah. <laughs> prison fight! Which one of these guys is going to be the prison bitch? I would actually put my money on one of the preppies. Wait, they're the preppies? Well, they're like the jocks and stuff. They're the jocks. Jocks mm -hmm. aren't preppies. They're the same oh. thing. They'll always be the same thing. <laughs> Wait, what's the difference between a preppy and a jock? 
Like, Jock was just focused on sports while Puppy hey, was just more established, had nicer hair. Yeah, I was going to say, the only difference is hair, Joe. <laughs> but isn't also the, the other thing. difference is that a Jock will go and he'll wear the jacket. But at least he knows he's earned the jacket because he's going to play football. But the preppy would wear the jacket, but he does jack shit. He only has the jacket because his mommy and daddy donated to the school. This is like you've got more issues than I do. Well, no, 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 no. I mean, I'm just trying to figure that out. <laughs> Fucking Dickner in the Letterbridge jacket. I was manager for five years. Even though high school's only four years. <laughs> I cleaned up their towels every single goddamn minute. Just like Clark Kent. <laughs> You know, a daughter like you who's not dead. Oh, they're playing chess with donuts. <laughs> Actually, I think David Lynch did it. You got some fine donuts here between Twin Peaks. Those waffles at the end there? Or? They're waffle donuts. That's it. Are they the ones with peanut peanut butter? They're waffle. They're waffles with. Donuts Wait, are there really inside. donuts with peanut butter? Well, I'm not, well, I know there are donuts with peanut butter, but are they waffles with peanut butter? You know, you take you okay, take waffles. For, and make oh, no, 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 no. Let's go back to this wonderful don donuts with peanut butter. Thing. I'm certain that there is such a thing as donut well, well, peanut butter donuts. Yeah, forget about waffles. I was talking about. <laughs> Shut the fuck up about waffles for a sec. <laughs> okay, let's look this up. Donuts. Oh, donut puns. Oh, there's peach donuts. Oh, uh, yeah, there's such a thing. Peanut butter donuts. Of course there are. I've had peanut butter donuts. There's this donut shop in Chicago. That we Lucy to. goes to all that trouble to get extra donuts for Agent Cooper. He eats half of a donut. You I, ass. I hate the people who eat half a donut <laughs> and then they leave the other half. And then well, they leave the other 25 donuts. Well, as the show goes on, he completely makes up for it. <laughs> he should be diabetic by the end of the show. <laughs> Both <What>? barking. <laughs> what? Because <laughs> they're caged dogs. Oh, God. <laughs> Nathan's not having fun. <laughs> Up. <laughs> now, when you say fucked it's up... It's a David Lynch show. I, 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 I should reiterate. It's not fucked up. It's just a David no, Lynch No, no, you know, it, David Lynch shows are by their nature fucked up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, you can't, watch, you can't watch Blue Velvet and go, that's perfectly balanced. <laughs> I do really like Blue Velvet. Blue Velvet's great. Blue Velvet was really good. But it's fucked up. It's fucked up. <laughs> Mulholland Drive. I love Mulholland Drive. It is Mulholland. I always get the titles mixed up. It is Mulholland Drive, right? Mulholland yeah. Drive. Why you get it confused with Mulholland Falls? Not the movie, but just the titles. The titles, because I'm always worried I'm saying the wrong title. I know you got it. But Mulholland Drive. That's a good movie. Woo! It's fucked up. <laughs> oh. You know what's fucked up and is not a good movie is Dune. I. Ooh. Have you seen Dune? Yeah. I fucking hate Dune. That's man, for with my a money. Passion. For my money, that's the most confusing David Lynch film. And I, <laughs> and I mean this, and I mean this sincerely. And that is, you could be extremely abstract and bizarre, like an Inland Empire and Lost Highway, what mm -hmm. have you. But at least it's such a strange world that I go with the flow of it. The problem with Dune is that it has this narrative. It is trying to make you understand what the heck is going on, and it doesn't work because it's just so confusing and confounding. So was it ever revealed, because he, he was explaining the whole backstory with her to McLaughlin, is it revealed that she killed the owner of the sawmill that she married after well, six months? Because it totally sounded like that was that. You have, because, let me put it this way, you have no plans of watching the rest of this show, do you? Eh, not really. Well, when we get to the credits, I will tell you who killed Laura. I, I, I know I know that I Are can't, I can't remember who oh. the actual person was, oh, wait, but wait. I remember that whoever it was was look look by... in the mirror. Uh, yeah. what? Okay, in that shot where um, Grace Z Smith was screaming, you saw um, a reflection of um, an actor. I can't remember his name right yeah, now. Yeah, let's actually go back. You know, we're, yeah, let's we're, go back. We're rewinding. But, um, we're rewinding, folks. Yeah, yeah we were look, right okay. there. Let's go back. Even and further? Do you want to freeze frame it for him? Let's go back. So yeah, no, 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 it's forward a little bit. Okay, yeah, we're watching. Yeah, yeah. So everyone who wants to join in on the fun, 
She's Gracie is on the couch. She got a cigarette. Gracie's a smith. Who falls asleep with a cigarette in there? A smoker. Yeah, she's doing that. They're going through the woods. It looks like they're gonna go find the ear, and then you oh, see okay. a guy in the mirror. No. Yeah, the mirror. There, see him. Yeah. See the guy in the mirror. There's okay. a guy in the mirror. That was an accident. Oh, okay. It wasn't I supposed. To, it wasn't supposed to be be that way. And it was the second accident. It's kind of creepy, though. Yeah, and it was the second accident involving that actor on set. Yeah. The first one was um, he kind of got himself trapped in a room in a room during um setting. He was a set dresser, mm -hmm. and he was uh, kind of seen behind the bars of Laura Palmer's bed. David Lynch saw it, loved the vision, and said, "You know what? I want to put you in the show. Let me just think of a way to do it." And then that <laughs> and then that accident happened, and Lynch loved the shot. Uh, the editor said, "But wait, there's um." There's a guy um, in the mirror. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think his name is Silva, David Silva or Robert Silva. Uh, but his, but they, <laughs> but they, uh, they said uh, his name, uh, whatever the guy's name was. Ah, oh, he's in the shot. He goes, no, I love it. And then that's how he figured out who was going to be the killer of Laura Palmer. Because I know, I know that because, whoever the person was mm -hmm. was possessed by a demon. Okay. Or something like that. Okay, Bob is the demon. Yes, yeah. He is the uh, he's a, like a the name of the demon. He's someone yeah. who uh, lives and on the um, pain and suffering of others, and um, he possessed somebody, who, and uh, through that he. Um, I've been told before. I just can't. remember. He essentially what it is. Um, through the person he possessed, he um, he was molesting Laura since the age of twelve, okay. and the person that he possessed was Laura's father. Okay. So anybody who's listening. Laura's father was possessed by Bob. Ray Weiss. Ray Weiss. Yep. Leland Palmer. And under the control of Bob, with no memory of him doing it, mm -hmm. he killed his daughter. Yep. Okay. And what you said about um, Josie Packard. Now that's also, revealed. But now, that's in the revealed. international version, how is that revealed? Well, in the international version, they don't even mention um, it, they don't even, they only mention Bob. They don't mention Leland. So he just goes, <gasps> Bob! Yeah, but you actually see Bob in physical person. Oh. You go, yeah, okay. I'm Bob. <laughs> so, you, so they don't say anything about Leland. Because I'm assuming Lynch didn't want that to happen just in the off chance that if somebody from the U.S. who liked Twin Peaks went to Europe. So in the international version, they just reveal that it's some random guy. Yeah. That can, oh, that's fucking bullshit. Yes. <laughs> and also what you said about Josie. She did make the attempt to kill her husband, along mm -hmm. with um, the uh, waitress who owns the diner, Norma, mm -hmm. Norma's husband. She hired him or something to do it, and that's why he went. Away. He was arrested for manslaughter. Okay. Because as soon as he started saying, like, oh, well, she married the owner of the sawmill, and six months later he died and left everything here, I'm like, oh, she told him. Oh, right. and, th and she then. She straight but, up murdered but, his ass. But, but then, <laughs> that's another connection that Twin Peaks has with Robocop. Ray Wise. Is in um, Robocop, mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, the the man who because uh, hand Josie Packard's uh, Mr. Packard, he's not dead, faked his death. Oh. and when he shows up, it's the old man from Robocop. Ah, nice. I always wondered what would happen if Peter Weller showed up. Put the best spin team on my desk. Now, with Twin Peaks, the mystery and the whole thing with Bob, whatever, is revealed by the end of the first season? No, but uh, halfway through the... Uh, no, I, I would say within the first third of the second season, they reveal it. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Due to pressure from the network. Gotcha. Because Lynch would... And I think in the end, Lynch, Lynch was right, that since it didn't take place over a case of months or years, Twin mm -hmm. Peaks took it took place over a matter of days that they could keep the to keep it going and using Laura Palmer's murder to find out every single secret of the town because mm -hmm. somehow everyone was connected to her and what she was doing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And Makes he sense. was in the end he was right. You know, you know, he was as right as David's wrong for being so racist. Is the What? With David Lynch? Is no, there any David said <laughs> racist? No. <laughs> wait, wait, here's um, a question. When Bob was molesting her, I'm trying to remember, was Bob possessing the dad? Yeah, the Bob was possessing Leland, and Le so he was using Le so for she would, he was using Leland to essentially rape his own daughter. And of course, twelve-year-old Laura Palmer pretty much sees it. Well, it's weird because in Fire Walks with Me, it's clear that she kind of knows that it's Bob, but she knows that Bob is somebody else. And then um, Bob is essentially in the movie. Bob is essentially in the middle of having her, when all of a sudden he turns back into Leland, and that's when she mm -hmm. has, that's when she figures out that it's been her father's body raping her. Hmm. So, so on that pleasant note, well, so what do we think about the show? Rape. Is so, there any information about what the reboot will be about, or is it 
being okay, a well, um, secret. what's going to happen um, is later at the end of this year, um, because obviously they can't pick up directly from where they left off because mm-hmm. Twin Peaks ended on a cl- on a cliffhanger. Okay. Um, there's going to be a book that comes out that's going to f- officially bridge the gap between the, where the show ended and the new show. Wait, 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 a book by Mark Frost. Yeah, but I don't have no time to read no books. Well, then I guess you're not really going to find out how you know how did how the cliffhanger get resolved if you don't read it. I'm sorry, but that's the way it's going to When they just do something like open an insane asylum, there's Cooper, bam. But what, <laughs> you're assuming that's the way they want it to go. Oh, okay. They open up, uh, he's, he's in the ground and he appears. Ah. Okay, you're, again, you're assuming that's the way they want it to go. Oh. I mean, if you don't want to read it, that's fine. Oh, wait, so you know how it goes. I'm assuming, because, okay, when there was still a plan for a third season, the plan was very early on for um, Truman to go in and save Cooper. How does he save him? I don't know. They just said that was the plan. So I'm assuming that that's going to be somehow detailed in um, the book coming out by Mark Frost uh, called um, the, Secret Li- you know, the Secret Lives of Twin Peaks. And I don't see any problem with them doing a book. It's no different than what um, Disney's doing with Star Wars, bridging the gap between Jedi and Episode Seven. No different. Yeah, but Doing away a- with all the canon that's already been established. <laughs> well, the stuff that's kind of... Over the decades... Yeah, just like, to be, you know what? Just throw it out the door. Yeah, just something, just, just something simple. I, I don't see a problem with that at all. I mean, if you want to read it, read it. I, I understand it, but at the same time, I'm like, all those people who wrote those books and did the con and whatever else for the last, you know, 20, 30 years. Yeah. Like, all their hard work is just basically thrown in the trash. And well, I feel I feel kind of bad. Well, they but I, I understand well, that they not, want to start fresh, It's, it's so. not like they're not yeah. going to keep publishing them and get residuals. I mean, well, yeah. Because yeah, they've yeah. already revealed they're going to... Star Wars can, will continue publishing them, but they'll just... If, yeah. if something is apocryphal, is that the correct term? I don't know. Well, if something is not canon, let's go easier, then it's going to be released under the banner Star Wars Legends. And if you're, and you're going to get... If it's re-released, obviously you're going to get some kind of residual for it. Yeah. And as far as Twin Peaks go, I don't see any difference like if they do the book fine i don't see any issue with it mm. because the book's just going to say how you know how the cliffhanger was resolved and what everyone's been doing in the 25 years so when the new show opens up it can essentially open up fresh but with the same history okay mm. yeah so the pi- pilot what do you think i love twin peaks so i'm just going to put it there i love me some twin peaks <laughs> nathan yeah it was fine mm-hmm. yeah so so, should we talk about what's going to be for next week's episode? Um, it's going to be it's another choice. It's yeah. going to be another comic lock room classic. It is. Opinion. It is. And actually, about this film, the rumor was when Comic Lachlan walked out of the premiere, he it was reported that he said, "I thought this was supposed to be an art house film." And also, it has the funniest fucking sex scene I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a doozy. <laughs> I've, Nathan, you've already figured it out. Oh no, no, I, I know what the movie is, and I've seen it a yes. couple times. Yes. Yeah, I've only seen it's fun. I've only seen one person fuck like that, and he's sitting right next to me with a Superman hat on. <laughs> Who the dog? Yes. Yes, Nathan fucked my dog. <laughs> hey, he just wagged his tail. The dog tells the truth. He is really cute. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Well, I'm Cameron. I'm David. And I'm relieved that we still don't have to watch on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Wait till my next turn. If you keep <laughs> oh shit! Wait, keep it wait. up, son. Is that going to be his nuclear option? That Nathan's going to get his revenge? Wait, how, wait how, if, if Nathan wants to have a meltdown over on Her Majesty's Secret Service, I'm not going to have a meltdown. I'm just going to be really bored. <laughs> Why would you be bored? It's not that we're watching Quantum of Solace. Ooh, Quantum of Solace is pretty bad. Yeah. Anyways, take it easy, guys. And we promise, next week, no screwy commentary. And then David will tone down the racism. That's not a guarantee.